What's up guys, welcome back to KSW TV where you get all your Man City related news, all Man City related content. Back at it again with a brand new video and today we're going to be talking about the possibility of Neymar Jr. What are the pros, what are the cons and overall what do I feel should happen, should we go in for him or not? Let's get into it. Now Manchester City have done their business quite early in this transfer window. We've brought in a lot of players and a lot of players have gone out, especially Youth players we've raised a lot of money, and for the first time that I can probably remember, we're a lot of ahead in the sort of net spend sort of trophy thing. I think we're about forty or fifty million pounds ahead of what we've bought, and we've made some great signings like Julian Alvarez, Erling Haaland, and Calvin Phillips as well. But in the last twenty-four to forty-eight hours, there's been sources coming out that Pep Guardiola or the Manchester City representatives have been in contact with Neymar and his representatives a possible move to the Eddie had. I don't know if it's going to be this summer or for next summer, but it's big news regardless. Neymar Jr. is a footballing icon, whether you like him or not. One of the biggest names in the game. He attracts so much attention. He's an amazing footballer. When he's not injured and on his day, he can be one of the most beautiful footballers to watch for the eye test. Now, it has been pretty well documented, especially uh, for the contract extension of Kylian Mbappe. And the amount of power he has, let's be honest, he's pretty much the sporting director for PSG now, that he has a lot of influence and he is not happy with Neymar and also the club isn't as well. They kind of want to get him out the way and out the club before the end of this transfer window because I think a contract extension gets activated uh, as soon as this transfer window is finished and they don't want that, especially with the wages he's on, which is around £800,000 a week. That's crazy. I don't think (laughs) Man City will ever get anywhere near that. We've got Kevin De Bruyne on 400,000, but let's be honest, he's probably the best midfielder in the world and he's been at our club the longest of any player in the team and the output he gives, he warrants those wages. But we all know how he joined PSG from Barcelona for a record 222 million euros. And since there, he hasn't lived up to the expectation. He's had a good season here and there with numbers. He's always been a great player, uh, regardless of had a bad season or not. He's a beautiful footballer. But he came in to do a job. He came in to win the Champions League for them, get their first ever Champions League. And it just hasn't worked. He did get them to a final and they lost to Bayern Munich, who that year was the team to beat. Um, We lost out to Leon in those Champions League uh, rounds. But I think if we got into the final, we would have beat Bayern. But I couldn't see PSG beating Bayern that year. And they won 1-0. And that would have crushed Neymar. It would have probably knocked him down a peg or two. But I digress. With the level of influence a player like Neymar has, will this be able to work if he does come to Manchester City, especially with Pep Guardiola at the helm? He's like to establish that there is no player bigger than the club. There is no player bigger than the system he puts out. But what are the you know cons of him joining? Obviously, he is predominantly a winger, a left winger, uh, to be exact. Uh, who plays on the left wing for us? Well, we've had players like Raheem Sterling there for a long time. We've now got Phil Foden, uh, one of our uh, main academy prospects, one of the best young players in the world playing out there. He also cuts into the middle as well. But now we've got Jack Grealish there as well, who uh, we've paid a lot of money for. We've invested a lot in Jack Grealish. So would he be playing that much on the left wing? I can't see that happening. Can he play on the right? Yes. Has he played anywhere near as many games in his career? As he's done on the right, no. The output hasn't been as good as being on the left, and especially down the middle as well. But we've got Riyad Mahrez out there. I think warrants that number one position on the right. He's one of the best right wingers in the world, and I love watching Riyad Mahrez. I don't really see with that contract extension he just signed, his game time getting any less than what it was last year, especially in the Premier League. He didn't play anywhere near as much as I thought he would. We've also got players like Julian Alvarez that have come in. Cole Palmer coming through from the academy, who's also a right winger. So I I can't see him knocking down anyone or taking anyone's game time on the wing position. We've signed Erling Haaland. He's not playing down the middle, let's be for real. Unless we uh, rest Erling Haaland and play him down as a false nine and we go back to our old ways, which we've won the last two Premier Leagues with. Um, Why break? You know, not broke, don't fix it. I think of the saying then. But uh, he can play down the middle, and he's good. But I really like watching him in the cam position. The only problem is Kevin De Bruyne is our attacking midfielder. He's our playmaker. He's the one who makes uh, something from nothing. 
And it is beautiful to see Neymar play in the cam position. Probably my favorite position to see him. When he's got the ball at his feet, it's magical. But we'd have to switch up the system somehow to accommodate Neymar in the attacking uh, midfield role with Kevin De Bruyne or even a Bernardo Silva in there as well. So we'd have to switch up the system. A lot of players are going to have their game time reduced, and that can be a detriment to the club uh, and the team as well. Uh, on a moral standpoint, a lot of players will probably want to leave if they're being promised to have a little bit more game time than the season before, and then a guy like Neymar comes in with that much experience, that much influence, and uh, you know, obviously he needs their game time. Can a player like Neymar mix with Pep Guardiola and the Manchester City team? We are, I can honestly mentality monsters. Neymar is susceptible to the diva-like behavior, spitting his dummy, taking days off. We all know the annual injuries with his sister's birthday. He also likes to go out and party and enjoy life. And it's also good to have hobbies and interests outside of football. You don't just have to be 100% committed to football, but sometimes he takes the piss and misses games that he thinks are not important. Um, And he usually, he likes to do things that Normal footballers, especially in our team, Manchester City wouldn't dare to do, especially when you've got Pep Guardiola expecting so much from you. It's insane the, uh, the level you have to be to play for Manchester City. But we have seen signings like recently Erling Horn, a, a sign that you wouldn't think you know, would be a Pep signing. It's obvious that you need a striker. Why not buy the, one of the best strikers? But as a player, Erling Horn doesn't really fit the criteria. We want mobile, really good on the ball players. Um, not just a sort of Van Basten like player. We need someone who can drop deep you know, back to the ball, be comfortable on the ball. Sort of like a Harry Kane sort of striker is what I was thinking we would went for. But we have been going out there and buying players that we usually wouldn't buy. So buying a Neymar like that, especially in you know the recent signings we've had, it wouldn't surprise me at all. It's just that attitude problem that really sort of gives me the ick. Now, what's in it for him if he comes to Manchester City? Obviously, it's going to be a, a lot of a culture shock when he comes to Manchester. He's lived in Barcelona. He's lived in Brazil. He's lived in Paris. Manchester's a lot different to those countries. Not as sunny, but I don't think he speaks English. Could that be a problem? Maybe, but we have Portuguese players. We have Brazilian players, so he can communicate through them. Obviously, it's kind of a repetition if he comes here from PSG because in the same uh, sort of position that we are, we've been in Europe for a while now. We've spent quite a lot of money. We've got the best coaches in the world, and we still haven't won the Champions League. So let's be real. That could be incentive for him, but it could be a repetition of what happened to PSG. Could it be a curse to Manchester City if Neymar comes? Could it hinder us for the next X amount of years he's there of not winning a Champions League? Maybe, but when you think of uh, a team like Manchester City compared to PSG, we're more of a team we play as a unit. When you think of PSG, it's more individual, sort of like uh, career mode, I guess you could sort of say, um, but at an extreme level. You know, you've got Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, Ramos, like Marquinhos. You've got so many players you'd buy on career mode and you put in a team, you know, this is the best team. That's past, uh, PSG, sorry. They don't play as well as other teams do in Europe. So, obviously, if he wants to go down in his legacy as one of the best Brazilian players of all time, winning the Champions League outside of Messi's shadow, yes, that's incentive to him, but probably if he's not going to win uh, the World Cup for this year in Qatar, and this could be his last World Cup, he has said himself, he wants to win the Ballon d'Or at the very least. You think of the best Brazilian players, in, especially in recent years, Kaká, Ronaldinho, Arno and Ronaldo, they've all won Ballon d'Ors, if not one, more than one Ballon d'Or. So that could be a massive incentive for him, but it's a big chance to take. He's more likely to win a Ballon d'Or if he wins the Champions League at PSG because he's a superstar in that team. But when you're in uh, Manchester City, you're still the superstar, but there's so many players in our team that could take us through to that Champions League final, that can win us that Champions League final, not just Neymar. But he does play very well in Europe. But that was just my quick thoughts on Neymar Jr., the rumors coming to Manchester City. What do I think? I've weighed out the pros and cons, and from a personal standpoint, I'd love to see Neymar at the club, but I don't think it's right for the team. So I wouldn't go for him if I was uh, the board here at Manchester City or Pep Guardiola. He wouldn't get the game time he thinks he would, and I think he just brings a 
a, a weird little vibe and I don't really want to break the wage structure for him. So I think it'd be best if he stays at Paris. Probably would be the only club that can afford him. I don't think I can ever see him going back to Barcelona, especially with the financial situation they are now. But let us know what you think in the comments. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, turn the bell notifications on. Join the Man City Global Fan Group for any Man City related content at all. Over 400,000 members. I'll leave it up here and also down in the description. Sorry if you want to join. Uh, but I'll see you in the next one. Peace.